I'm the wrong kind of Jew that the media and politicians don't want you to know exists, but there are thousands of us and we're here saying not in our name. When you see the coverage of all these demonstrations and things, you get the impression that no Jews are involved, that Jews are fearful, Jews hate what's going on. No, it's not true. There's hundreds of us here today. There've been thousands of Jews in this country alone taking the side of the Palestinians against the Israeli state. All over the world, there must be hundreds of thousands of Jewish people who are now saying, not in my name. One of the most ridiculous things that we've had to deal with, particularly in the last week or so, is the idea that the police are enforcing a no-go zone for Jews in order to defend all these hate marchers, people who are supporters of terrorism. It's almost the reversal of the truth. We are saying, along with most sensible people around the world, that everybody, Palestinians included, deserve to be free wherever they live, including between the river, Jordan, and the Mediterranean Sea. People say, but as a Jew, are you not frightened? Are you not subjected to assaults and threats and, and abuse? And I say, well, actually, I do feel threatened, abused, negated, silenced, canceled, because when it comes to the media seeking Jewish opinion about what's going on, they go to the Board of Deputies of British Jews or the Chief Rabbi or the Jewish Labour Movement or, heaven forfend, the campaign against anti-Semitism. All these groups which have support for Israel sort of ingrained in their whole agenda and their whole raison d'etre. If there is hatred and abuse directed at Jews, it's often coming from people of the Zionist perspective against anti-Zionist Jews like me. People need to take on board the fact that there are elders in the Jewish community Many of them are Holocaust survivors and also the descendants of Holocaust survivors who have been present on these demonstrations, given fantastic interviews themselves, explaining why, as victims of a past genocide, they will not toler tolerate an ongoing genocide that the world is witnessing in real time. It is so dangerous and divisive the way this so-called conflict has been portrayed taking the Israeli line, calling it the Israel-Hamas war, when this is clearly a war against the entire Palestinian people. Collective punishment, ethnic cleansing, plausible genocide. And there is nothing religious about this war. This is a war of settler colonialism against an occupied people. One of the little rays of hope in the current situation, and it's getting bigger, it's getting wider, it's getting brighter, is the growth of opposition to what Israel is doing. And it's happening across the world and it's happening among swathes of young people. Look at what's happening in American campuses. And of course, among the many young people who are coming out and saying, not in our name and we won't tolerate it and trying to shut down arms factories and calling for an arms embargo, are many, many young Jewish people. I've met a youngster today who's never been on a demonstration before. He's got family in Israel and gradually he's managed to, to sort of feel empowered enough, feel confident enough that he has to come and speak out alongside all these other people who are demonstrating for just peace and justice really. It's not rocket science, is it? Over the last few weeks and months, we have seen once again that our media, by and large, takes the side of the oppressor against the oppressed. If you want to read and see information, views from people who are on the right side of history, then please support Double Down News on Patreon. Thank you.